by Jared Petty for IGN. It's another IGN developer Let's Play. Today, I'm joined by... Frank Cifaldi, a designer, producer, and head of restoration for Digital Eclipse. And? And Ray Jimenez. I am a producer at Capcom. Uh, Capcom. Gentlemen, what are we playing here today? Well, right now we are playing uh, Mega Man Legacy Collection. And more specifically, we are playing Mega Man 3 in the collection. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the technical issues that come into taking these games, which have their origins from the mid-1980s to the early 1990s, right. and converting them to a form that's that's going to be historically accurate, playable on modern systems, and some of the really unique technical stuff that you've done to make this a fun experience. So let's, I'm going uh, to start with my favorite. All ready? right. Show it off, Frank. All right. So uh, let's turn on that TV mode. Okay. Now what's up? Now what's happening? Oh, look how the display changed here. You guys are going to see this, and it's going to show up well in the uh, in the HD resolution you're viewing this at. Frank, what did that change just do? Did you put a filter over things? Yeah. So this is a filter that simulates uh, a CRT television, circa the sort of early '90s, I'd say. Uh, that that uh, simulates composite input. You remember the crappy yellow plugs we used to use? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what's it doing in that simulation? What, what what's happening to the uh, to the 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 way the signal's being interpreted in, in whatever engine we're using. Right. Um, what yeah, here? there's a few things that's happening here. Um, so the most noticeable, I think, is the uh, introduction of uh, very faint on the video uh, scan lines, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that uh, you used to see on CRT televisions you don't see so much anymore. Right. Um, but in addition to that, there's a little bit of the color bleed you would get in composite. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a mild amount of motion blur. Um, I think it's pretty cool too. There's like a little bit of a pixel uh, jittering. That yeah, yeah. Do we do we ever do we occasionally get a roll, uh, an antenna roll through here or uh, oh, like like, like like a, like roll? a ghosting of, yeah. of a, of a yeah, news yeah. broadcast in the background yeah, or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's part of the authentic <laughs> video game experience if, if you were there for it. Uh, so we we have this filtering going on now. Frank, you and I were talking just before we started this interview about something unique uh, regarding resolution that you guys did in the engine for this game. Can oh, you tell right. me a little bit about uh, how that works? So so uh, typically, when you see uh, a screenshot of these games online, uh, you know, with, with very perfect, uh, crisp pixel art, right? Uh -huh. uh, typically, take, taken from an emulator or something, uh, the 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 pixels are, are exactly square. Mm -hmm. They're they're one to one, but that's not actually how uh, the game would be displayed on, on a television at the time. That television CRT televisions don't have pixels; they have scan lines. Okay, and. Uh, so the NES, when it was uh, displayed on a television, uh, the, the the image would get stretched horizontally a little bit because those those scan line areas were not perfectly square; they were slightly horizontal. Well, it's not that the scan lines weren't square. Scan lines yeah. are just lines, They're right? Just vertical Shooting lines. from a gun in the back of the TV, right? right? Yeah. It, 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 the, so the gun would just draw each line, you know, starting from the top. It would draw one, go to the next, draw down. Uh -huh. uh, but the the NES itself, the the resolution it spit out, you know, wasn't exactly a 4-3 image okay. it, it was it was a little bit squashed uh so uh crt televisions would naturally stretch them uh, a small amount uh, horizontally and, so are you guys correcting for that here yeah 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 okay. so this this is displaying just like a tv would. so what that means is what you're seeing here is closer to what you see would have seen on a crt television than other mega man uh collections compilations that have been done before yeah like uh anniversary which ray worked on uh mm -hmm. those pixels were square okay uh I think that was necessary for uh, s standard def games, which which Anniversary was at the time. And this uh, isn't just a matter of filtering. This is actually built into the engine. I mean, this is this is a part of how you display yeah, the game. Yeah, this, this is this is a shader that we built into the Eclipse engine okay. that, that we uh, apply on top of our uh, our core. Now let's talk a little bit about about that. Oh, you engine. should see the monitor. Oh yeah, let's see. Too. Okay, so this is what it would look like playing this on is what? Like a CRT monitor, like an arcade ah, monitor. Okay. So if you're a weirdo like me and you have. Uh, an NES RGB board installed at home, and, and you're plugging it in uh, via SCART to your circa 1985 Sony PVM monitor. Okay, uh, you, you said Sony <laughs> PVM, not a Wells Gardner. I was wondering. Yeah, uh, okay, I'm a so, PVM man. Okay, yeah. so you, you've uh, got so you've got this plugged into an arcade monitor. This is what it looks. Yeah, like. Yeah, this is what it looks like when I play Nintendo at home. Okay, yeah. so is this mode in there because you were like, I want it to be like when I play, when I play Nintendo at home? Uh, partially, yeah, <laughs> but but also because. Uh, I think we collectively feel like a lot of modern uh, players of classic games have sort of evolved into uh, caring about displays and okay. and actually do display things like this. So, and so you built this in. So this is this is built for people who uh, play RGB consoles, like on on say a Frame Meister upscaler or something. Okay. 
I'm dropping a lot of words that no that's, one knows. No, again, that's <laughs> the audience knows. That's what they're here for uh, in the case of this video. And I, I'd like to ask a little bit more about that on, on the technical end of things. Sure. Um, so what's going on here in front of us? Is this a reprogramming, rebuilding? Is this an emulation? Is this a, a simulation of some kind? What, what tech is making this happen? Is, is this an emulator? No, it's not an emulator uh, specifically for these games, uh, though the Eclipse engine does support traditional emulators. Uh, this one's sort of a weird hybrid uh, that we haven't really coined a, a term for yet, but essentially we're taking source elements that were provided by Capcom for ah. the original games okay. and uh, sort of transcribing them into a, a format that's readable by our engine. Okay. Uh, so they're kind of like reprogrammed in C sort of under the hood. Okay. Uh, but th the idea being that, you know, we're going for extreme accuracy without uh, going the traditional emulator route. Fascinating. I, I, I'd i really like to, to learn more about that eventually, but that is really, really cool. Do you know anybody else that's uh, that's done this in a product? Have you guys used this in, in previous Oh, uh, we haven't used stuff? this uh, before. Okay. This was developed just for this, yeah. Does it have theoretical applications for other classic games? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. really? So yeah. you could potentially plug something else yeah, into the, this the, and do another another collection? Yeah, the way the Eclipse engine works is we create different system modules okay. and, and, and port the games over to it. So Really, uh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, and that was really how the project kicked off. Um, they, they had this tech that they've been developing. Uh, they kind of had a proto version of it when, we had worked, when I had worked with them way back in the day on other yeah. projects. Uh, they came to us saying that they had a very accurate way of you know bringing back NES games using... Uh, source assets and they approached us and were like hey what, what game what this sounds like really cool what should we do here and Mega Man was really like the no-brainer for us it's like our first set is going to be the no the the Mega Man games which is which is why and the question comes up very validly why is this Mega Man 1 through 6 mm -hmm. Mega Man 1 through 6 because we're, we're this the tech that we're working with with Digital Eclipse focuses uh, squarely on the old NES uh, console. Okay, that makes sense. So uh, of all the technical uh, feats and trickery, Ray, that you've seen in this, you said you, you guys were drawn to this engine for, for the reasons that what it was able to pull off. What's your favorite uh, technical feature of the Legacy Collection? Uh, it, it's basically w w why we went with them is that everything is it's accurate. It's mm -hmm. like with once it was it wasn't a feature like we have all of the the, the bells and whistles the glitches the slowdown are, are in the game and it's mm -hmm. it's not an artifact of having to put them in it's just that they are there by default because they're emulating the game as uh, or not as I, I don't you mistakenly use the word emulating but uh, it's technically the correct word but it's not what you think of as an emulator you know uh, what I mean okay. so like I, I make that mistake too. Okay, so but it's rendering the game in a way that, that's most accurate. So yeah. if we get enough things on a, on a single scan line, we're going to get flicker, things like that? or, or? Yeah, okay. so we did actually, um, the the only thing we did was reduce some of the flicker. Okay. Um, and Why'd you choose to do that? So there are two reasons an NES game will flicker. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is because you've hit a limitation of, of the number of sprites that can be moving on a scan line. Right. And... That's a hardware level uh, limitation. So, so when the hardware sees too many sprites, it'll start drawing one per frame and bouncing back right. and forth, right? Um, but then there's another kind of flicker that is programmed into the games to re uh, to reduce slowdown. Ah, okay. Uh, so anything that was programmed into the games, we left in. Okay. Uh, because basically, because we 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 can't make the call as to why that was done. Yeah. Right? Like that might have been by design, mm -hmm. so we just left it alone. And also because we feel like it's important to present the games, you know, the way they were at the time. Right. Uh, so, but you know, we figured that any of the hardware limitation stuff was probably not meant to be you know what i mean they right. probably would have preferred a cleaner uh, you're, and you're in a very interesting position having to make those judgment calls exactly. you know, these are not yeah. games that you know you didn't design mega right. man yet here you are designing a mega man game you're, right. you're putting together uh, this collection and having are there any other judgment calls like that or situations for you or ray that where you're like hmm yeah, what are we going to do here th there were some you might have noticed when we were playing mega man uh three that th there was a black bar on the left side of the screen mm -hmm. um and that, that's actually very interesting of like why that's there. Um, some folk, and you don't generally notice it unless you play with the border that there's a black bar on the side of the screen. But uh, the, the question came up was like, oh, what is that? You, did you guys, don't you need to fix that by moving the border? And it's like, no, that's actually how the game displayed yeah. okay. uh, in the original game. Uh, maybe because of overscan reasons, I'm sure Frank would know more exactly why that happened. But um, th that that was there in the original game. And the, the, the idea was like, do we take that out or do we adjust the frame so it's not noticeable? And it's like, no. 
let's keep it the way it is because that's the way it is. Yeah. Okay. So that was yeah. If you turn on a Nintendo, like that, that border space is black. It's gonna be there, yeah. right? Okay. You just can't see it. That makes sense. Well, you can see it. Yeah. If you can. Okay. You can't like, see you, it. Like you, you can, can see it. Just, yeah. Wow. Really we, cool. we did crop off uh, what you call overscan uh, mm -hmm. on the original TVs because the image that the Nintendo would put out uh, was larger than anyone would actually see mm -hmm. on a TV. And and all video games did that because of what we call board overscan. Okay. Uh, and overscan tended to be sort of covered up by, like, I don't know, the bezel on your television. Right. right. That makes sense. Yeah. So uh, we covered that up. Um, because that part was never meant to be seen. So right, it was hidden, even literally hidden behind a piece right, of plastic, right. uh, or, or wood. Yeah, and and in a lot of situations, like if if you watched, uh, say, the Summer Games Done Quick stuff, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of their streams were showing overscan, and you would see some of the garbage that was on those areas going on, going on over it. the edge yeah. of things. Yeah, that's, so uh, so we made sure to cut that out. So it was you know. Again, we, we, we focused entirely on what was the presentation like in that time. What did you experience if you were sitting in front of a television then yeah. playing it? Yeah, and I, actually, I learned from Frank and I just like a few days ago when I was asking about that that particular thing. It's like, I guess the, the general consensus between uh, people that you know are really into the NES displays is that 226 is is the agreed upon like viewing area. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the NES uh, was spitting out 240 lines, 240p, that was yeah. the resolution. But 226 is about, you know, where we the, all agree. What you actually see. Like, is the average, average across. There, so, like, no no CRT is the same, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. So, like, you might see one or two lines less yeah. in some displays. Which may be hard for, for some of our listeners that, that weren't around for it to like, get their heads a, around. The fact that CRT? you could, is that, that, yeah, what's a CRT? They, they function very differently than the, than the pixel-oriented displays. Was yeah. Your dad. To, it, was it a... Did you have a sense of, uh, of responsibility? I mean, it's, it's walking around, you're kind of a custodian of, of a great legacy here. Uh, yeah. Did any of these uh, decisions keep you up at night? Oh, God, yeah. I think both of us were kept up at night with, with some of these decisions. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, I think ultimately just the core philosophy that we sort of... Well done, Ray. <laughs> the, the core philosophy we sort of collectively adhere to was just, you know, always default to what was it back then. Okay. You know what I mean? Thanks. So, like, I I don't think there were any too tough decisions made because even all the extra features we put in, uh, you know, th we didn't really do uh, much that creatively was new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we sort of adhered to just presenting archival material. Neat. So, right. uh, well, thank you so much, yeah. guys. I, I, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Frank. Uh, we've got more uh, Mega Man Legacy uh, Let's Plays that you can check out, uh, talking here with the developers. And uh, folks, for everything Mega Man, uh, we hope you'll uh, stay here with your friends at IGN. Bye-bye. <laughs>